Well, hello, everybody. As you can see, I still have a little problem uh, with my camera. Um, don't know what's going on, but hey, I'm glad you're here to do some drawing. We're still going to do the show, of course. Wouldn't stop it for anything. Uh, we're going to make sure that you all get to do a little drawing today because it is so healthy and good for you and, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, let us get cracking. Um, I see we have some folks joining us in the chat, as always, which is uh, wonderful. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of the show. Uh, a lot of the names I see are people that join me pretty much every week, and I have to tell you, that just uh, warms my heart, and I'm glad that you're able to make it so regularly. So thank you for that. Um, Alrighty, why don't we get cooking? Now, to do these drawings, you're going to need to do uh, drawing and of course to do drawing you need to have something to draw with and as I often say you don't just need a pen a pencil a marker a crayon or even a brush you could always use something creative like uh, you know maybe you get a nice french fry and you dip it in some ketchup and you just draw all over a dinner plate it doesn't matter these drawings are nice and simple you can do them with anything you like whatever makes you happy all right today's drawing is going to be something that came to my mind because of the weather we've had here lately where I live, which has been very rainy. And a good thing you can do when you go uh, with rainy weather is you can catch fish. And I just thought we'd do a little fishing drawing today. Now, remember, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things. And those are a straight line, a zigzag, and of course, a little curvilinear line for you there. As long as you can do those, you are in great shape, my friends. You're in great shape. Alrighty, so if you're ready, let's begin. Now for this drawing today, we're gonna start with a line that goes mostly straight up and down, okay? Now remember, when you're drawing on paper, you might be wondering, Kyle, how long should I draw these lines? Well, I'd say that this line would be up about you know, three quarters of an inch, something like that, which I believe amounts to about two centimeters, okay? If that helps any of you all out, and I hope it does. Um, well, I see some nice uh, greetings from folks here in the chat as well. Thanks everybody, nice to see you. Buongiorno, I see from, uh, from Fabio, thank you very much. I love Italy. That's actually where I got married, in case any of you all haven't heard that story before. Um, all right, now, the next step is we're gonna carry across this way with a very long line. How long, you might ask? Well, let's see. If this is about this length, we're gonna go maybe one, two, three, four times the length of that line, okay? You could even go a little longer. You know, I might, I might just push it to four and a half or five, you know, something like that. That feels good for me. So just check out and compare how long each of those lines are and try and match it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Try and get it close to that. All right, folks. Now we're going to angle back this away. All right, check it out. Down we go. We're going to stop about where this line stops if you're going to draw a line straight across, okay? Somewhere in that vicinity. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you'll see why later, all right? Not to worry. Now, this line we drew right here, we're going to make a line right here that is about the same length, okay? So let's do that. Let's just go up like this. Ta-da! About the same length, okay? And from there, we're going to tilt it back 
like this, tilt it on back. So that's an obtuse angle. For all you math fans out there, obtuse. All right, speaking of angles, we want to do a right angle coming across this way. All right, and that is going to start about here and just carry on over like so. You see how wobbly my line is? Listen, folks, you don't have to draw perfectly straight lines. It doesn't matter, especially with these drawings, not one bit. All right, now it's time for a curve, a linear line. This will be a C curve. We're going to come up and over like this, up and over, okay? Up and over, up and over like that, up and over. And we're going to carry straight on through down like this. All right, so this went up and over and straight on through. And I'll zoom in here so you can see this really clearly. We're gonna just do a little line that way. All right. Now we are going to carry back in this direction. Okay, watch how I do this. Back we go and stop. So back down this way, stop right there, and then we just draw a little line from that corner to meet it. Excellent. Now right here, I draw a little line. And right here, I draw a little dash like that. Simple. And then here, I'm going to draw a curvilinear line like this. We go down and over. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to go out and back, out and back. Alrighty. Now, carrying on, we are going to start from this corner. We're gonna move out just a little hair like this, and we're gonna go down like that. And then we're gonna go out to about here. Okay, so this is another obtuse angle, out to about there. Not a right angle, it's a little wider. All right, now jump back over to this side and come down this away and make contact with that line, okay? Give yourself a little space. And from here, I want you to come on up in this direction. We're gonna go like this and stop right about there, okay? And here, we are going to go up and a little bit of a curve right there. See that? I came out and then I curved that line. And right here in the middle of all of it, do a nice little cycle like that. Nice little cycle. Okay. Alrighty. Now, from here, I want you to do this one, two, and then here we go down and across. See that? One, two, down, across. And then we're just gonna go round it out like that. Okay. Now from this little corner right in here, okie dokie, I'm gonna draw down. And this time I'm going to draw up at an angle like this. So not following this line here, but instead we're going to go up that way, okay? So we're gonna make that a little longer. And then we're going to do the number seven up and across. There's our little number seven. Alrighty, now, right here, are you ready? We're gonna go one, two, three, four. Okay, see that? One, two, three, four. You can make this one a little longer. There you go. You should sort of follow an angle like this. Alrighty. And I'm gonna draw a little line like that. All right, now behind this hand, we just do another little half a circle. See how complex all this stuff is? But if we do it step by step, it's really not so bad, is it folks? It's really not so bad. 
All right, and from here, see this line we drew here? Well, we're gonna carry that line up and we are going to curve it this away. So check it out. We go up and then we curve it like that. Curve it like that. And from here, we're gonna go down straight and we're gonna stop roughly about where these two lines stop here. So we're just gonna go like that. All right. All right. Now here we're gonna do little notches. Notch, 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 notch. And what I want you to do is do little curvilinear lines in between all those. Check it out. I'm gonna go like this. Curve it and stop. Curve it and stop. Curve it and stop. Curve it and stop. And another like that. So, excellent. And now we can draw water. And we just do this. We just go like this. Okay. Simple, simple, simple. Do a few more of those here. Like that. Okay. And then here. And here. So we're just creating a little environment, a little watery environment for our fisher friend. All right. And if you want, you can draw little lines, give them some sleeves like that. And maybe you could do this. You do like a little zigzag and a circle for where you would put the oars of the boat, right? For when you're rowing. And maybe you could write a little name for the boat here on the side, right? You could do little action lines like this. You say, oh, something's tugging, something's tugging, right? Look at that. Action lines. You start telling a story with the drawing. Slide that on over there. And that is the you draw it portion of the show for today. There you go. Alrighty, it is time for an art tip. And today I wanna to talk to you again about drawing hair. And the way I wanna talk about it is I want to show you how to think about the shape of hair when you draw it. People think of hair as being a whole bunch of little strands, right? Or curly bits or something in between, right? But I don't want you to think so much about the strands, the individual strands of hair themselves, okay? Instead, I want you to think about the fact that hair grows on a head, right? And a head has a shape to it that is cylindrical, right? We have a cylindrical shape and the hair is growing around that. So just to really simplify it, let me just show you a really simple model here. So imagine that I'm wrapping this hair around the head, like one solid object, okay? Think of it that way. Use a different color and we'll just really outline that for you. And this will help when you're designing hair for your characters and whatnot, so that you can make sure that the hair that is growing on their heads looks like that's where it's growing, okay? So this would go around the back, all the way behind that head, right? And so as an example, let's say I've got a character who is sort of looking down this way. We're looking at them sort of from the top, okay? Remember that the hair is gonna grow out onto the temples, the side of the head here, right? And then around like so, and if I want to draw and design hair, I wanna first start with that understanding that it's going all the way around, okay? From here and here, and now I can start to do things like, okay, cool, so I'm gonna flip it up that way, and then here, maybe it's a little cowlick, and then around the back we go here, 
Maybe there's a little part right there, so I'm gonna flip it down that way, etc., etc. Okay, and you know maybe if all of this was a little lighter, like so. Now, if I go ahead and grab my green and draw on top of that, you'll see how that all fits together in a natural way, because I'm thinking about, first and foremost, the shape of what? The head, right? Upon which the hair is growing. So if that's top of mind, then I know that I'm gonna get those shapes right. Let me hide that for just a second. So that makes sense, right? That all works out. And I want you to think about that the next time you're thinking about drawing hair on someone's head, okay? So as another example, we have a person looking up maybe this way, right? So here is our subject. This person's looking up, so I go, okay, go out, go over and around like this. And then I can draw around. There's my shape. Go ahead and grab the darker color. And now as I'm going ahead and drawing this person, Oops, there we go. I can much more easily understand how to get that hair to feel like it has the right shape and is really growing around the head in three dimensions, okay? might be a little advanced for some folks, but hey, it's never too early to think about this kind of stuff, to apply a little bit of logic to your drawings, right? This will really help you out. Think about it. Think about it like a solid object. Design it from there. Design it around the head. Okay, folks? Try that out. All righty. Now, it's time for the animal and activity game where you suggest for me an animal doing something funny, something strange, something unexpected, bizarre, weird, all of those kinds of things. I'm gonna grab my nice light blue color to draw with here, and that's gonna be my sketch color. Just as an example of the kinds of things we've done in the past, we had a mouse looking at a vending machine, we've done um, a singing butterfly, uh, what else have we done? Let's see. We've done an eagle hitchhiking. So many fun ideas. So I leave it up to you. You're always very creative and you come up with great stuff. And I can't wait to see what you come up with today. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So. Hmm. Cat playing a cello. I like that. Flamingo giraffe. Not sure what that means. A hawk holding a baby rattle. Mm -hmm. A caterpillar playing a keyboard or piano. Well, time is short. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this cat playing a cello because my son, who is a very good violin player, has actually just started learning cello pretty much for kicks because once you know one string instrument, you know you can kind of figure out a lot of the others. Um. And it's just, that's kind of fresh in my mind, like sort of what a cello looks like. And I'm probably not going to draw it right now that I've said that. Um, I probably shouldn't have said anything. Uh, but let's, let's just give it a try here. Okay. Cat playing cello. Let's go for it. Mm. 
going to get that uh, bow hand going straight across. I'll be listening to his teacher tell him like some of the important stuff you got to do with cello, which is a little different, different form from uh, from violin. But some of the stuff, I mean, he's able he's able to pick it up pretty quickly because of the because of his violin skills. So. So here comes the body of the cello down this way. And we've got the top of the cello. And there's like a cutout right there, I believe. Very much like a violin. I could draw a straight line down to sort of help myself find the general shapes I'm looking for. And it's got like a little sharpie bit at the bottom there. No idea what that's called. I know it's not called a sharpie bit, but yeah. Any cellists out there in the chat? Any cellists? I wouldn't be surprised if there are. I know you all are interesting uh, art, artsy people out there, so. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Okay, there's our cat sitting down. Get that a little bit more accurate across that way. And get that foot out like so. That feels pretty much about right. Uh, the top of the cello has um, what does it have like has the big knobs that do that. It rolls up in a way. Probably drew the neck a little long, but uh, whatever. Ain't the end of the world. All right, let's see. If we can make this work in about four minutes. Can we do it? It's been done before. I think we can do it. Here we go. One. Whoops, wrong there. One, two, three. Nice big ear there. hand for the bow hand there boing bow goes across obviously I'm not gonna worry about drawing the bow hair that would be crazy and I'm not that crazy I'm crazy enough to try and do a drawing this fast but not to be adding little details like that which frankly don't make that big of a difference ah there we go All righty. Try and make his hand do some kind of interesting configuration there. And up we go, and down, and uh, beep, 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 beep. And uh, there's some spot here where I think the, the strings all kind of bend down or something and then there's like a thing there. I can't remember how that all works. Like I said, not a cellist, but seeing one around the house lately, so kind of got the gist of it, you know? Got the gist of it. Uh, 
Um, let's get that shoulder up high. And get these knobs out this away. And folks, I hope you'll join me tomorrow, same time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Pacific for more drawing. And hopefully by then I'll figure, I'll have figured out what is going on with my camera because it's a mystery. It's on and then it's off. It just kind of magically decides it doesn't want to work anymore. Can't explain it. Uh, but there you go. There is your cat playing cello. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Everybody take care. Ciao for now.